Hello everyone and welcome to this little talk about our favorite template engine, Twig. This talk is about going through the engine itself a little, talking about what's cool and useful to know about it and giving you a few tricks when it comes to using it if you don't already know them. Uh, this is a shorter version of a one hour long talk I'll publish soon by the way. And if you already know everything, just try to get all the poons on the slides. So first of all, before we go down the rabbit hole, a couple of words about me. My name is William Pino. I'm what you would call a ninja, in the sense that I'm a web architect, lead developer, a Java coach, solutions architect, etc. Got 14 years of experience in IT, mostly with web development and architecture. I'm currently working in a company named uh, Neosoft in a city called Limoges in France. And I'm also a university teacher for backend development, computer science knowledge, PHP, Symfony, and big data through Apache Cassandra. And I also slightly slightly contributed to some uh, open source projects like uh, PHP CS Fixer, Symfony Documentation, Drupal Modules, PHP Documentations, Composer, or PHP Fig. Uh, before we start, just a quick note to better explain one limitation to the topic today. For this talk, I'll be limiting the topic to using Twig in a Symfony environment. You can use Twig in a Symfony uh, in, a, in, a, in a standalone uh, PHP-based environment that fulfills the basic technical requirements. Essentially, you should use a composer with composer require twig slash twig uh, and create a bootstrapper file that grabs the autoloader, tells uh, twig what it should start searching for templates or when or fill it with key value arrays, uh, ignite the environment, uh, and then ask twig to render stuff. But here today, I will remain just <clears throat> within the boundaries of a Symfony application to avoid configuration and comparison. So let's hover the basics. So normally, I would explain what Twig is and is not, uh, but for this talk, I will just uh, assume that you all know what Twig is, um, and I also bypass explanations of what Twig is and what template engines are to front end. I would also normally need to explain why we use Twig and not straight out of the box PHP code for views. Uh, there's a lot to say there, but I won't go into details today. Uh, and I would also usually ex re explain uh, the grammatical analysis on how Twig works, uh, Lexer, the parser, the compiler, the AST, uh, how templates get compiled into a PHP class file, then do uh, call its due display method, gets, etc. So, um, but that uh, story shall be told another time. So let's move on, assuming you know all this. Um, so now you have included your Twig Composer package in your Symfony app. It's done by default if you have a website skeleton project profile. You should head up to config slash packages as usual, where you'll find a twig.yml file as for many Symfony bundles configuration. And if you dump the configuration reference, you'll get this. That's it, that's all you get. I won't get I won't um explain all the options here, but as you can see, we have at least uh global variables to pass to all templates, uh, other readable form themes, default auto escaping strategy, uh, date and number formats down here, uh, and a couple more options we won't go through, but you will find in the Symfony Twig bundle documentation, uh, the Twig configuration reference. We'll talk about those. Uh, one quick word about coding. Um, as you expect from any generic uh, reusable technology, there are coding standards. And guess what? They are pretty simple. By the way, when working with Twig, please install the IDE or text editor plugins. They will save your lives. Mostly for indentation, spaces, syntax highlighting, typos detection, and hypertext code browsing. Which leads this, by the way, please do auto format your Twig templates. Twig shares this problem with HTML for most developers. It almost never gets formatted correctly, which unfortunately um, uh, does not happen to everyone. But fortunately, stuff like PHP CS Fixer or PHP Storm, for example, do correctly under one second for your whole project. Unfortunately, PHP 6 Fixer um, doesn't work for non-PHP code, but there's a side project uh, with Twig.cs, which is designed to be the equivalent, though it's not official. Oh, and if you don't already know it, uh, you can execute uh, live your Twig code on a side project named twigfiddle.com. You can test Twig versions, store your code snippets, and even test several templates at a time. It's a great tool, especially if you want to drive a Twig certification. If you want to know more about it, just head up to certification.symphony.com. So now let's see a few things that might catch your attention. The first thing I'd like to talk about is pretty straightforward, string expression interpolation. Most people usually forget about that, mostly because strings are already processed while in templates and also mostly because it's hard to mix with translation strings. I think the other reason for that is that it's not that intuitive for uh, PHP developers to use the, the sharp character to uh, start variables as starting with um, sharp 
plus brace here is very close to brace plus sharp, which actually starts comments in tweaks, but this works. Second thing I'd really like to stress here is the absolute lack of defensive programming I see too often in tweak templates. You simply cannot have your templates crash and produce fatal errors, especially since their code is supposed to be way simpler than models code. And Twig has plenty of tools for that. Uh, just since you cannot use strong typing like you would do with PHP 7 and 8, you have to assume that your templates can fail. So you can use just like here the is defined test, the is not empty test, the is iterable test, use them. They're ridiculously low cost, have their rewards. You can also use the default uh, filter which handles empty and undefined variables. You can also add the ignore missing options to the include tag. And remember, you cannot trust anything, anyone, nowhere, not even yourself. The only way to prevent failures are hard typing or locally checking whatever you're using, which you should do with Twig. Um, one very, very common thing I see is forgetting about what the slice filter does. It actually takes anything that's traversable or stringable and cuts it down to the good size. Just keep in mind there's no straight conversion to PHP equivalence as both position and length can be positive and negative starting from the start or the end of a string going that much from start to the end respectively. Uh, also, a quick tip about excerpts, if you don't want to uh, play with regexes yourself, just use the pipe u extension to convert it to Unicode string from the Symfony string component. And use the third param of the truncate filter to generate a non-invasive break that preserves words integrity. And by the way, you can iterate over a subset of any iterable item using the shorthands, using the slice, using whatever you want it to be, using um, the shorthand with dot dot here, or even on the fly with Twig shorthands. This is very cool. Uh, there are parents in Twig. The first one is, is the looping parents, which you can call through loop dot parent. This uh, refers to um, the nesting loop that contains the current one, and this goes through block definitions and through sub templates inclusion. That's very cool. The other parent, super straightforward, is the equivalent more or less of the parent keyword in PHP. Since Twig produces output only, this outputs the parent block. Little trick if you have more than one inheritance with all block overrides, Twig will use the closest ancestor as the parent, not the furthest one. And each ancestor can also do the same. It's going to be quite of a headache, but it works as intended. All right. So these here on the right are not uh, ASCII art. They are uh, Twig delimiters. Many, many times you don't want white space to be locally inserted when you're using them, which usually breaks uses uh, as visible spaces, etc. So many people I know still don't know that white space control exists on all delimiters. Uh, it's pretty simple. Adding a dash removes all the white space on the side you're putting it to. Adding a tilde does the same thing, but saves new lives. New lines, sorry. <laughs> you can also use a spaceless filter or a spaceless tag, um, which is useful if you have a long sequence of HTML content that you want to secure. Remember, they only work around HTML tags, nothing more. Super quick tip here, you can explicit your code in templates a little more by preventing uh, argument names only for filters, tests, and functions though. This can help bypassing some arguments, for instance here, and increases readability. Um, since it started existing, Twig syntax didn't really change, so you should be pretty good from now on when forcing argument names to the future. About the in shorthand, um, this one is a little tricky and I stumbled upon uh, some uh, misuses. Uh, this works on strings, arrays, or objects implementing the traversable interface, which is pretty much everything you expect it to work with. Cool. Less cool, it uses PHP STR pose on twig on strings and in arrays on arrays. But variables are passed first, which means you have to be careful with your variables. All the tests on this slide are true. And no, the strict variables configuration parameters have nothing to do with that. So be careful with especially the tests on the bottom if you pay attention to them. Okay. To me, the most common purposes of a templating engine when it comes to dates are uh, displaying a date, you do that with a date filter. Creating a date from composite part, you do that with a date function. Be careful, you might mistake one for another. Like here, for example, where I used both. These are not the same. 
Three, you should be comparing dates. You also do that with a date function because it converts anything possible to a date. And four, you should alter a date by changing the time or the time zone. And you do that mostly with date modify. Another pretty straightforward thing when you, you can use the attribute method uh, to get something from an object or an array. Uh, and bonus, this helps knowing if what you ask is defined safely. This is really, really interesting and you should that, uh, use that for defensive programming too. Um, okay, so this is a slide that can give headaches depending on how you understand escaping policy. Uh, direct strings are not processed, while strings used in locally declared variables are. When processed, row is a simple thing to understand. It simply returns the value, but escapes processes it all the time using different PHP functions, which means multiple call on escapes are not idempotent, while multiple calls on row are. And here's a quick one. Simply remember to validate your output using W3C validator, which includes adding a lang attribute on your HTML tag. Symfony always knows your local, so you should give it to your templates. And be careful, it's not the same. VCP 47 HTML tag syntax is not the same as the ISO one. Also, please um, just add a simple overreadable block with your global classes on the topmost tags, namely the HTML tags. This saves front-end developers' lives and they'll buy you free cookies. A quick SEO tip, um, you'll stumble upon pages with varying URLs uh, where everything will be different whether for the same HTTP request, like search results, paginating contents, or simply having two URLs for the same content, like Drupal's uh, slugged and non-slugged URL, for instance. And for that, you can use the rel attributes on link tags and specify that your URLs are uh, canonical uh, to another specific one. It is okay, by the way, to target the current URL. So with this little trick, uh, you will have your app be less of a, lay, a haystack of path wires for SEO. Um, Twig has a cycle function. Uh, this seems pretty restrictive, but it can help. Uh, the common uses for that could be uh, browsing anything that is paper made and folded uh, with left and right pages, adding parity classes and attributes to HTML, or handing, um, handling HTML static uh, flex and grid classes. Uh, for example, when you have to, to have items that differ from others marked through HTML uh, instead of CSS counting, for instance. Another quick tip, you can test if blocks are defined and within reach of current context, of course. This is a pretty common mistake, uh, including blocks without checking that they exist. Overriding one is never a problem, as Twig considers that at worst, you are defining a new one instead. And by the way, uh, this here is the syntax to output a block anywhere, uh, even if the same template you're previously defining into, which is cool. One quick thing about includes, you can use a ternary condition on a tag. For instance, if your website has a regular version uh, and an eco-friendly version with a very light ecological imprint, you can pass your info to your templates or take it from the cookies or request path, etc., and use it to change your layout just like this. Uh, and remember that uh, even tags uh, have dynamic parsing, so you can have anything dynamic here as well. Moving on, let's now talk a little about things you know exist, but you never use for many reasons. Here I listed a few things I rarely see being used, up to a point people tend to forget they exist and re-implement them instead, which is not really good. <laughs> like the first and last filters that work anywhere, the hard type check is same as, uh, mostly because people forget the parentheses or where they go, the string component extension, which is really insanely good, the advanced batched and map filters uh, as well, the amazing addition of the cache tag, which is going to blow your mind. Uh, so now one quick word about your application logic. Um, this is a mistake I see uh, from a lot of people uh, not used to templating engines. When, it, when, when using a template engine, at least you are using the V of the MVC design pattern. When using it in a Symfony framework project, you're using all of them, M, V, and C. So when you read a template, it should only contain output logic and as little processing as it could. Uh, when you need to output more data, um, get it from the models and get them through your controllers. Don't short circuit that. Same for advanced filtering of your data, which is selecting some. Do not add overhead to your application by going with the all in first, select later. 
Okay, when it comes to browsing data, this is what templates are made for. When it comes to organizing the output of raw data, this is what templates are made for. Globally, just remember, if you start from a template where you realize you're missing some data, never solve this problem starting with your templates. You are at the end of the solution, not at the beginning. Talking about them, why should you put your templates, right? Why, how should you should name them and organize them? Because once you've done it the first time, there's a high chance you won't move them anymore until your application dies, which is a shame because physically moving templates with Twig is really easy, more than moving PHP classes, actually. And it's actually easier than it looks to organize templates, even though there's a lot of room for innovation and choice. The base mechanics of Twig are inheritance and overriding. If you're familiar with OOP, then you're already good with that. So there's a, simply, a simple logic that you should follow. Whenever you stumble upon the branching difference between what you have in your templates and the one you're assembling, you need inheritance. And when you stumble upon a local cherry-picked difference, it means you need inclusion. I do not also recommend um, empty blocks that you assume will be overridden. That's a bad design pattern. A couple of tips here about how to achieve um, a decent structure. You should split your domains, which is at least uh, back office and front office, uh, API versions, API apart from HTML, connected from public, etc. Spend some time refactoring your templates, just like models, configurations, controllers, helpers, everything needs a little cleaning from time to time. This applies to file name, and contents. I see many unused or 100% similar blocks in apps quite often that simply should be removed without damage. As for good practices, don't forget that anything meant to be solely included needs to be prefixed with an underscore. Some people still forget to do that. And grouping all your partial templates in a folder is good. Uh, at la and last but not the least, uh, think about clean architecture principles. Uh, if People cannot understand what your structure means, nor what your templates are for, nor where to find them on the first try. You probably need to review your naming and your file tree. When I say you can reuse templates, it's no joke when it comes to the ones generated by the maker bundle. Just If you just set up your, your differences, which is um, titles, submit buttons, whatever, in your controllers, your Cradle templates can totally be the same. With five doctrine entities, this goes down from 30 down to six templates. With 10 entities, this goes from 60 to six. Do I need to go on? <laughs> no. Uh, a problem you might face, uh, especially, is when you've been developing with Symfony 2, like I did back in the old days, or using the add templates annotations without parameters, is how you should define your template names. One quick tip I can give you is that you should uh, separate your controllers and directories, groups by use, or domain, hello, secures and DDD, um, and have those domains reflected in the template directory as well, which means you should have the same directory uh, in both places um, so that they follow the same logic. You can do this using the Symfony Maker bundle, just add the prefixes and it will understand what you want to do. Uh, on the other side, don't be afraid to use directories. Here, I just uh, separated front office and back office controllers, for example. By the way, I do appreciate this, pact this practice. Um, don't let mixed um, admin and public routes in the same controllers. And keep framework dependent directories as they are generated. Like the security subdirectory can be moved, but everyone expects it to exist and will search there first for everything security related. Another quick HTML trick, you always need to provide accurate metadata. Parts of them are generic, application-wide, and most of them can use default values with little to no referencing damage. So you should have a global HTML meta block inclusion with basic HTML metadata, like HTML5 meta or Open Graph meta, and one, another one with special data from social media at least. And I do recommend creating a specific template for each use. This also goes towards clean coding. Uh, so now we have Twig. We also have Symfony, but everything is decoupled. So as Symfony frameworks adds Twig, you need a bundle to integrate it, the Twig bundle. And then we need something between both of them. This is called a bridge connecting both worlds, the Twig bridge. Let's take a look at a few things they bring to you. 
When it comes to URL generation, the Brits provide uh, URL and path functions. Unless you have different limitations, um, try to generate absolute links all the time with URL. Doesn't make a huge difference, but you can definitely help uh, solving SEO problems. If you want to access Twig anywhere, just make sure you're supposed uh, regarding your application logic and structure. Thanks to a couple of tools like uh, PHP 5 Autoloader, PHP 8 Promoted Constructor, and Symfony 4 Auto Wiring, the, depend the dependency injection just works like a charm like this. Uh, dumping stuff with Twig is easy, but it might be it might be misleading. When working with Symfony, the PHP dump function will come from the var dumper component, while the Twig dump function will come from the Twig debug extension. Not the same. Oh, and by the way, you can provide one or several arguments. It will dump them sequentially, uh, or no arguments, uh, in which case it would just get all the current context. Uh, when it comes to theming forms, this can also be a lot of work to do. Uh, fortunately, Symfony is uh, embedded with form layouts that actually do the stuff for you. You can change them globally in your configuration, and you can locally override the value. To create your form theming, you should inspire from um, existing ones. You'll never rewrite them completely. So you should copy them, see what you need to change, and then extend the new one in your form template. By the way, this is slightly off topic, but I do recommend that you check out OpQuest uh, web quality guidelines when it comes to forms. First thing I can tell you about it, do not forget to provide placeholders and descriptions with filling guidelines for your fields. This is mandatory. One cool thing about the Twig Bridge is that it automatically uh, adds global variables you know you'll need. Through this global app, you'll have access to the current user, session and security token, HTTP requests, flash messages, current environment name, and debug mode status. I've seen some people try to reinvent those, so I thought it might be useful to include this slide. And there are about 40 more additions uh, from the Twig Bridge, but unfortunately I can't be talking about all of them today. Uh, so what happens when you intend to use something specific in an app that's not obviously included within Twig? Guess what? It's normal. It happens all the time and what, that's why many GitHub uh, issues get closed while having a potential of usefulness because Twig cannot cover all app use cases, otherwise you would burn your RAM modules while trying to load it. Fortunately, Twig is aware that you might want to extend it. More than this, it actually exposes a whole API for that. So instead of hacking the core, you simply have to write extensions. Uh, in Symfony, when developing your own app, you should place them in SSE slash Twig, and the Maker Bundle can quickly do that for you. If you're using Symfony Auto Wiring, you have nothing else to do. First, macros and globals. Um, Macros are defined uh, in templates that you can import, basic, simple, we've seen the globals. Uh, when you go down the rabbit hole, Alice, uh, you can use an extension to add functions, filters, tag, operators, and tests. Just be careful to understand what they are so you don't misuse them. Filters are the easiest. They alter output from a given input. Functions are often used to bring something new. Uh, but since your new stuff should be coming from controllers, it means generating stuff spontaneously. Uh, tags, operators, and tests, I'd rather say you can, but hey, you don't need them. Uh, trust me, it's not the easiest thing to do and you really don't want to. As we have seen above, if you want to add global variables, this is the way. In a, an environment specific or global configuration file, there's a twig.globals key, and there you'll define your key value custom globals. You can use this for metadata defaults, uh, file upload paths, or simply passing environment variables to Twig, like your CDN URLs, for instance. Um, if you want to see what it gives, uh, here's an example that comes from the Symfony UX component from Charge.js. As you can see, this is nothing but an extension. It has a unique name. It uses get functions to uh, add functions, declare a new function name uh, for Twig, and binds it call um, to uh, a PHP function, and you're done. Same here, with th this time with a Cilius Commerce, uh, you inject um, external dependency on the constructor, and you pass it through your new Twig function declarations. You can define the method to be called the PHP are a way, uh, just like this, and also if your callback handles output safety, you can tell if you're certain that your output is safe uh, for which escaping strategy. This one, again, comes from Oro Commerce, same again, declare a get filters method, and this time you add filters to Twig. 
exactly the same way your parameters will be passed to your callable. You want another one, this, in, this time for Symfony UX drops on. A little more complex here. This is not a Twig extension, but a Symfony kernel dependency injection extension. Here we process the Twig bundle configuration uh, and to inject configuration inside, regardless of what is in the YAML configuration file. This shows that you can make a bundle that handles part of Twig configuration by its own. Now you can also provide many more options, I won't detail here, but like a callback to determine whether the output is safe or not, uh, uses variadic arguments, is deprecated, etc. This comes, for example, from Drupal 9 source code. If you're using Drupal, you should be familiar with those use. One last thing to conclude, I'd like to illustrate a very common need, the need to customize arbitrary pieces of HTML anywhere on the website. Uh, a mechanic I'll simply label custom content blocks. What are they? There's something you have to have faced at least once in your life, allowing your administrators to edit parts of the website that are not URL bound, which means editing parts of HTML output that can be used and reused at different places. I added a few examples here. Uh, feel free to uh, pick up whatever the ones ring the bells um, to you the most. You can actually include that in almost 100% of your project, especially on commercial websites and project uh, showcase websites, guaranteed. So how do you achieve that really quickly using Symfony and Twig? So first you define keys. Those keys are custom content block identifiers. You set up those keys in a static array. Why? Because users and users cannot declare HTML customization anywhere. Uh, those keys also become translation keys for the back office administration and will fit a drop down field for your forms to choose which blocks you're creating. Of course, this is persisted, so you need to set up a storage space, mostly in the database. So let's create a doctrine entity and make use of a maker bundle to generate CRUDL and restrict it to admin only through the firewall. Uh, add the content field, a primary key, a weight integer to order them if they ever get multiple, because why not? And finally, make a Twig extension to load them and define your templates so you can simply use a Twig include statement to place a block. Want to see what it does? And, and how quickly you can add this to your project, this is the Twig extension. See, that's it. Just define an extension, uh, a function, grab your repository, get your entity uh, or your entities if you want to use multiple fetching, call a render function on a block. Wait, why a render function? Because this allows including the block with caching plus local administration links next to it, leading straight to the back office on the block edit page, or simply outputting the block without cache if that's what you need. So you simply have one template to output the block itself and one template which provides a static cache duration, you can make by dynamic if you want, and administration link. That was a simple demo of what we've seen from this talk in a very practical and useful way. And again, I'm sure you have plenty of possible improvements through your Twiggy heads. Uh, here are some I already found, uh, but the list is not over yet. And now if you have this done, uh, you can reuse it anywhere. Let's see another comment in handling the European Union global data privacy regulation constraints. With such a simple block mechanism, you can already use it for GDPR compliance cho consentment choices too. Uh, this can be done quickly. You can collect the needs from blocks, create a block for data use descriptions, then simply output your NTM HTML content following the choices made. So then you just test your uh, cookies, whatever, and you output the HTML. Um, and one last thing I'd like to add uh, to this talk, <laughs> you might find funny too. Uh, there are currently maintained ports of Twig in JavaScript uh, available through NPM and they work. <laughs> Not everything is accessible and developed yet, but people are interested in the project and I think it's cool. Uh, it might be more convenient than what Puck does and close to what EGS provides. If everything was implemented, it would make a solid engine in um, Express projects. There are probably some other attempts at porting Twig, like there was one in Java with JTwig, but it was abandoned a few years ago. And anyway, that's um, all for today. Um, now you should be able to farm your Twigs and turn them into great forests. I sincerely hope you'll talk and lighten you at least a little. Um, Thanks a lot to Symfony for trusting me on that and all uh, for selecting my talk uh, for this great edition of what I consider the best online PHP event. 
uh, thanks to all the people making that happen, Fabien, Nicolas, Javier, uh, and Sophie, to all the core team, the contributors that make open source work every day, to the people uh, working the documentation, and to the other great people I'm already forgetting to mention. Last but not the least, um, very special thanks to Titouan Galopin. Life is hell of a ride, buddy. And finally, thanks a lot to you all. If you are still alive after this, I'll take your questions and see you in space.